on July 20th, 1944, Stauffenberg flew from Berlin to East Prussia. By 11 a.m., he had arrived at Wolf's Lair, Hitler's secluded field headquarters. Der Stauffenberg musste A den Hitler umbringen und B musste durch die drei Sperrkreise rauskommen, pünktlich. Man drückte auf einen Knopf, da gingen alle Tore zu, da kam keiner mehr raus. Also es ist so ein Wunder überhaupt, dass der Stauffenberg aus dem Führerhauptquartier rausgekommen war. Armed with two bombs in his briefcase, Stauffenberg attended a staff meeting, where he was to give a status report on the Army's reserve unit. But shortly before the meeting, Stauffenberg was interrupted before he could arm the second explosive. With only 10 minutes in which to act, Stauffenberg placed the bomb under the conference table and excused himself to take a phone call. Stauffenberg konnte auch nicht warten, ob das ob der Hitler wirklich tot war, was er angenommen hat, weil er musste lebend aus dem Führerhauptquartier rauskommen, um nach Berlin zu fliegen, um dort die Walküre Plan zu starten und zu unterschreiben. Having witnessed the explosion from a safe distance, Stauffenberg got word to Berlin that Adolf Hitler was dead. When Stauffenberg arrived back from Hitler's headquarters, he saw that almost nothing had been done to get the coup going. And he marched into his superior officer's office, General Fromm, and told him that Hitler had been killed. And General Fromm didn't believe it and called Field Marshal Keitel in East Prussia to see what the situation was. And Keitel said, Hitler is alive. Hitler and some of his staff managed to get messages through to Berlin. The conspirators not succeeded in cutting off the radio and telephone links. And once these messages got through, then Fromm backpedaled. And Fromm said, you must shoot yourself. The coup cannot take place. And Stauffenberg said, I shall do no such thing. And then Fromm said, you are under arrest. And Stauffenberg said, on the contrary, it's you who is under arrest. After locking Fromm in a nearby office, Stauffenberg and his fellow conspirators initiated Operation Valkyrie. Soon after, Major Otto Raymer was sent to the propaganda ministry with orders to arrest Joseph Goebbels. He did not get very far. And Raymer said he had orders from Bendlerstraße, from the headquarters of the Home Army. And there was also information that Hitler had been killed and that the army must keep order. And Goebbels said he didn't believe that Hitler was killed and put Remo on the phone uh, with Hitler. And then Hitler said, do you realize that I am alive? And Remo said, yes, my Führer. Uh, so Remo was turned around by Hitler. Major Remer was persuaded by Goebbels to move his troops into the army headquarters to uh, quash the uh, um, conspiracy. Utilizing Raymer's newly arrived troops as a firing squad, General Fromm staged a desperate show of loyalty in order to save his own skin. At just after 11 p.m., within 12 hours of the failed assassination attempt, the general rounded up Stauffenberg along with his aide and two other officers and ordered them to be executed on the spot. For General Beck, the end was less than glorious. General Beck was allowed to use his pistol to shoot himself. He fired one shot that grazed his temple and he was not even quite unconscious and he was allowed a second shot but again failed to kill himself. And Fromm then ordered a corporal to give him the coup de grace, to shoot him. At just after midnight, in the courtyard of the Bendler block, Colonel Klaus von Stauffenberg, his aide, First Lieutenant Werner von Heften, General Friedrich Olbricht, and Colonel Albrecht Mertz von Quernheim were executed by a firing squad. 
with them went the hopes and prayers of the German resistance. <laughs> 